squeeze up. Give it on the end, squeeze up. The announcers. Welcome to the third annual Coon Rapids 4th of July Parade. I'm Steve Erickson along with Dorothy Jun, and we're here to bring you the commentary for this parade today. You know, Steve, the um, weather, uh, for having been so hot the week before, tonight it's rather cool. It's on uh, 60 degrees or so, a little bit cloudy, but uh, it's still a nice night for a parade, and there's a lot of people out. And as we can see coming down the street, the very first thing is the Legion Color Guard. Uh, yes, and it's Legion Post 334 Color Guard. The leader is Al Michaels. And, Dorothy, something kind of special here. The Legion just finished putting together um, a 50th anniversary celebration. So that is kind of... Neat too. Yes, the, the uh, 50th anniversary, they did a special show for their veterans and they did a um, uh, special tape also. And they had a special whole week long program at the American Legion. They did a wonderful job in honoring their World War II vets. And the celebration they had that day uh, right. was great. You know what we have here, Steve? We have this, just, uh, our chief, Steve Ahrens, he's riding in a Porsche. Uh, and this car was a drug confiscated car. Uh, <laughs> and he's throwing candy. candy. His wife Ginger is with him. Kids love kind that. Of, kind of a neat little car. They'll be using it. Evidently, they had confiscated it with the uh, drug task force in in conjunction with the um, neighboring towns. And the carnival also tonight. He's going to be first in the dunk tank. That's something new this year. And you the proceeds it. for that are going to go benefiting police scholarships. Right. Coming up here third, we have Mayor Bill Thompson. These are the Lions people, and uh, Mayor Thompson and Mayor Thompson and his wife. <laughs> I <laughs> just got hit with a piece of candy, which I didn't catch. And also the parade marshal, Pat Novak, and his wife, Mary. Great. And Pat is a drug enforcement officer with the Minneapolis Police Department. Uh, a parade marshal is selected every year, and I understand that it's kind of in conjunction with Snowflake Days, whoever's the Grand Marquis in that. It becomes and right. This, uh, right. This parade. And here we have uh, Ron Gageby and Larry Jorgensen, council members for the Kumanapa City Council. Gage B is the at-large, and uh, Larry Jorgen is, Jorgensen is for Ward 5. And they're followed by c council people Jerry Newton and Dave Soltis, who are also throwing candy. Kind of some neat cars here. Dorothy, it's just amazing that the number of people that come out and attend these uh, festivals, they're lined up on the street beforehand to get their seats and their spot. And uh, they just enjoy this entertainment. I, I think they do, and I, I think, Steve, I think I see more people lined up on the curb this year than there was last year, and um, I think they were also coming earlier yes. this year than yes. last year. Here's our Coon Rapids Marching Cardinal Band. Beautiful red and white colors. Um, always enjoy a band during a parade. And their director is Michael Mayer. And I think this would be a good time just to take a listen and uh, see what they have for us here. We're sitting right in front of the judges stand, by the way, Steve, which means that uh, we're going to see the best of what they have to offer. Yes. There you have it, the Coon Rapids High School Marching Band. And they're followed by the Lionel Lakes Lionesses Club. And you can see they're all clowns um, having a good time with the crowd. Kids always enjoy clowns, as I think everybody does. I think it's one of the funner parts of the parade to see these clowns, all the weird things they do. And I don't know what they have here. It's like some sort of drill. Yep, there's, the drill there's one on a bike there, waving to everybody. You know, uh, parades like this are, are nice because uh, we 
we are have other people from other communities participating in our parade, and it says I'm sure we have a lot of people from Peter Rapids participating in their parades. It's a fun time of year, Fourth of July. A lot of celebrations going on around the, around the communities around Minneapolis. Dorothy, you know the St. Paul Winter Carnival has celebrated its event for 109 years, so kind of a big run here for them. Do you know what's really amazing about that is that when any community can get behind a celebration for 109 years running, that's pretty good because a lot of times you get burned out on uh, celebrations like that, organizing them, getting them together. They do a good job at St. Paul. Doing good, how are you? Go ahead and. Uh, Lioness is throwing uh, throwing a little candy for Dorothy back. for all the people out here and. Uh, do a lot of good, the lionesses clubs, as do the lions in our community. Show the lionesses. And they've been serving the community for over 26 years, so it's right. kind of interesting to see all these groups service that they give to our community. Okay. One foam as they go by. And the uh, Deborah Miller. The Deborah Miller Dance Group is coming up next. And these people will be performing just on the stage just before the carnival tonight. Right, so right. The big opening so celebration down there. So you can, if you can, want to see them strut their stuff, all you have to do is go over there and, and to, the, uh, to the park, to San Quint Park, and watch them. Cute costumes. The most interesting thing, too, with these are all the costumes that these kids have, uh, all the different designs. And you know, some of these costumes, even uh, glow in the dark, if you've seen one of these performances, uh, when they turn down the lights, they actually glow the pink and the green on some of these. So that's really kind of neat. Coming up next is the Greater Twin Cities St. Bernard Club. In this uh, group, there's long-haired saints, short-haired saints, saints with carts, Saints with barrel, big ones, small ones, heavy ones, tall ones, they say they've got them all, and it sure looks like they do. A beautiful, beautiful breed of dog. Beautiful, beautiful breed of dog pulling some uh, carts. It looks like he's ready for some water there. <laughs> you know, one thing about uh, the, the St. Bernard dogs is those are all owners that are taking them, uh, walking with them, and that's kind of neat. Park River Estates uh, van is in the parade. They have the king and queen.
And you know this, the Parker Bear State Center is a great place. Um, recently they've installed sidewalks around their building for a safer environment for their residents. Spring Lake Park, Spring Lake Park Lions Club. Uh, Jim Marshall is their director. They have a 14-foot lion balloon on that one, actually. They've been in business for 38 years, uh, doing a lot of good work in the community. They have 92 members. And Dorothy, I know it says here that they're 38 years young, and that's kind of an important part there. Young, I they're not so 38 too. years old, they're young. I, right. So as you can see, that lion there going by us. Right. And you can also see in the side of your screen there some people passing out candy. Of course, all the kids rushing for that. Uh, coming up, coming up next is this wellness van, Steve. The uh, wellness van is going to be in the carnival um, during the whole carnival time. They will check free of charge, blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose. Uh, open to everyone. I said, as, as I said, it's free. It takes about 10 minutes to go through. Um, it's sponsored by the Lions, the, the 5M7 um, district. And uh, in the last year, they had attended uh, 35 events in which they um, brought their van and did the work for people. Yes, and here is the Coon Rapids float. Stephanie Jones is the president, of course, of Snowflake's Days. On board here, we have Junior Miss Coon Rapids, Amber McCloud, Junior First Princess, Elizabeth Kelcher, Teenage Miss Coon Rapids, Nicole Anterkan, Teenage First Princess, Jenny Gretsch, and of course, our own Miss Coon Rapids, you can see her right there in the middle of your screen. That is Rosalind Smith, and she recently competed in Austin, Dorothy. She competed in Austin, and although she didn't uh, become Miss Minnesota, I understood she did really good in her performance, and she did a very good showing. She made Coon Rapids proud. She's a nice girl. You know, another... Good representation. Another thing we might want to mention is that Snowflake Days is being moved next year. They're going to be doing that in January. That's right, the Snowflake Days. And we have the the, the Coon Rapids, Miss Coon Rapids um, scholarship. Uh, people are walking behind them, promoting the Miss Coon Rapids scholarship pageant. A lot of, lot of candy being handed out here tonight. Looks like they're bringing us some candy here. <laughs> are next on the on the scene. Of course the aqua gestures are always um, always associated with the aqua Thank you. And they uh, always have a good time in any parade they go in. Mm -hmm. The um, now they're celebrating their 50th anniversary next year. Right and the aqua is in July. Uh, a lot of events all over the city in Minneapolis. I know that they have a big, big parade themselves every year, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun to attend if you like to go downtown. And of course, the aqua gestures are what they say the gestures, they're clowns. There's a fella doing a little golfing right there. And I think somehow he's cheating, Steve, because I think he's got the ball attached right to his club. <laughs> kind of dressed interestingly, uh, interestingly this morning, too. I see a clown farther down the road that says, Oli's Ludafisk Pizza. I imagine that must be a real good combination. And there's a little fire engine that they, they come in. I guess the best part of being a clown is all the fun you get to have at these events. I think so. I think so, because you have a lot of fun teasing the kids and talking to the people, and uh, isn't that what it's all about? It is. That's what these parades are all about. And, of course, all over the Twin Cities, you can find celebrations this time of year. Uh, the Taste of Minnesota down. You can see right. fireworks every night there for free. Uh, now that we have the Mall of America and Camp Snoopy, too, I understand they're having fireworks for free. Absolutely. Each night in there. Uh, Valley Fair, of course, fireworks, and um, all the surrounding communities have celebrations. Of course, Blaine's Blazing Forth, and they're going to be in this parade a little later. Right, and the the, uh, Bla the Blaine Blazing Forth, they will have a parade also on the uh, 4th of July itself. Up next, we have the Minnesota Young Republicans, Dorothy. And their leader is um, Stephanie Jones, and uh, evidently it's young people who are getting, trying to get involved in, uh, in their party and their ideals and what they believe in. 
part of the Fourth of July from the old days was um, a lot of orations, political orations. We've gotten away from that over the years, but I guess we still have to keep a little bit of a hand in it. Here we have Eldon Workington behind, who is uh, was just elected, who was just elected to his uh, post when Joel Jacobs resigned. And that happened in March of this year. Yep, we went through a special election and uh, he was the one that was chosen. And of course he serves District 49B. We kind of lucked out tonight with the weather here. It's uh, The sun's trying to peek in and out of the clouds. You know, when the sun comes out, it actually feels a little warmer here. So that's kind of nice to watch these floats. Here comes the bla blaine, blazing 4th of July. Pretty patriotic colors, isn't it? They have all the royalty on it. And like I said, their parade is going to be on the 4th of July. Um, Melinda Miller is uh, the queen, the princess, Heather Clinton, Amy v Bettelson, Chelsea Carpenter, Alex Haspert, Michelle Jeffrey, Charlie Dummeyer. And the senior king and queen is Sally Golden and Earl Hamilton. Beautiful, beautiful red, white, and blue flag. Of course, as we said, uh, their celebration days are from June 29th through July 4th. So kind of like our celebration here in Coon Rapids, they have one also. That float sure has it all, all the sparkling blue, red, That's white, It's fun to see the, the pulling van also decorated, isn't it? And even the rotating flag there. Right. Coming up next, we have the, the Dare Ready Mix truck. Right. and. Uh, Mark Sell is, I think, driving it, and uh, it's just a big, beautiful truck in the parade, advertising their business. And of course, D.A.R.E. Uh, is one of those programs to help keep kids off drugs, and in Coon Rapids, that is uh, taught all over the different schools. A lot of police officers go into schools, talk to the kids, encourage them to stay off drugs, uh, other alternatives. So that is a good thing for our kids here in the city. Very, very successful program, very successful. Here we have the Southwest Junior Band, and that is from Forest Lake. Phil Rayan and Joe Moen are their um, leaders. And Dorothy, you know this band includes 7th and 8th grade students from Central and Southwest Junior Highs, of course that being in Forest Lake. And this year we have three bands in this parade. This is the second we saw the Coon Rapids High School Band, and now we're going to get a chance to listen to the Forest Lake High School Band. Let's take a listen. by those students. Good job. Looks like coming up next year we have the Coon Rapids Park and Recreation Committee? Commission, I'm sorry. And of course, anybody that attends the parks in Coon Rapids knows they're well kept we up. Steve. And um, a lot of people do attend those early evenings after dinner. A lot of Dorothy people like to go out to the Mike. park and uh, have a good time. Here we have the Roseville Royalty. 
The director is Joy Anderson, and riding in the car is Miss Rosebell and Princess. Of course, one part of the parade that we notice on a lot of these royalty floats is the wave. That's right. That's right. I think they take lessons of doing the wave. Yes. Bill Luther is passing us by, Congressman Bill Luther. Like I said, the 4th of July used to have a lot of political orations, and I still think in some of these celebrations, um, we still have to have a little politics involved. Bill Luther is our representative from District 6, by the way. And there he is, waving to the crowd. Of course, a flag there, one of the symbols of our elections. America great, here. Great country of ours, right. Coming up next here is Miss St. Francis and Princess. And down in St. Francis, they celebrate Pioneer Days, and that is the first weekend in June. So they've celebrated their 4th uh, of July celebration a little earlier than us. <laughs> they did. Their community celebration was just a little earlier. And Cheryl Myers is their director. Connie Merchant is following her on her little three-wheel cart, and she's a representative of the AARP. And I tell you, Steve, if you want to find an active AARP person, that's Connie Merchant. Yes, she is. Very. Coming up next is the Miss Columbia Heights float that follows Connie Merchant. There you see her going by. They celebrate Jamboree Days June 21st through the 25th, 1995. And of course, um, they have a big celebration. I saw it on TV a few days ago. It looked like they had a good time too. There we see some of the princesses, some of the junior royalty. Beautiful float. And that is followed by the fire department ladder truck from Maple Grove. They even sent a little representation of their city to our big parade. And you know, Dorothy, coming up behind that, of course, something everybody's favorite here uh, around the city, around the state, around the country, we have the Girl Scouts. And one of their big promotions during the year is, of course, selling Girl Scout cookies. I guess we all wait for that time of I year to come around. I, I think we do. I think we do. And everybody always says, oh, I don't want to eat them. But then they come around, and you can hardly wait to get uh, dig into them <laughs> because they are good. And Becky Anderson is their service unit manager out here. Another good organization for young kids to get into. I think so. And once they pass, Steve, we're going to see uh, the animal drill, the animal in, excuse me, drill team. Uh, this is the 19th year for the drill team. They've won many awards. The dogs are all owner trained. They're demonstrating how much more your pet can be. And you'll notice all the different breeds of dogs. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Look at those two collies laying there. Well, there's nothing like a well-behaved dog. That's the amazing thing, is how uh, trained they can get some of these dogs Look to be. Look at them all sitting so beautifully. And of course, they're showing off for the judges here right now, um, which is, like I said, a nice place for us to be sitting because this is where we're going to see all the good action. And they're getting a big, beautiful round of applause here as well. They should. Beautiful dogs. And the animal in drill team is something new to our parade this year. And Dorothy, you might want to mention now that uh, Jim Fox and Russ Isaacson are the co-chairs for this parade. Do a great job of getting everything together, putting the whole event together. And I, be I understand that they begin planning. Um, I mean, they're actually planning for next year's event already. It takes a lot of months to get this yes. together. But I guess they really began planning for this one in February, lining up everybody. And I got a chance to talk to Jim Fox, and he says the biggest thing, a difficult part of putting together a parade is getting a response back. But of course, tonight doesn't look that way. We got over 60 units in this parade. Almost 70, right? And there's State Senator Don Betzel. It, it's hard to project so far in advance what parades you're going to attend, because I imagine every community must put out a call for people to be in the parade. Right, and there's only so much you can do in, during the summer with your volunteers and people. Right. 
Annandale Royalty, uh, under the direction of Teresa Busca, is coming up, and Miss Annandale is Andrea Peterson. The princes are uh, Lisa Purcell and Kim Dingman. They have their uh, Fourth of July celebration also. So uh, there's a lot of communities that really do celebrate the 4th of July. Wait Park Spass Tag is up next here, and they are located west of St. Cloud. They just picked a royalty. They had their celebration June 16th, so their royalty is brand new. One thing I have to notice, Steve, as we're watching this parade tonight, the windows died down. It was such, so it's such a windy afternoon, and the windows died down, and it appears that everybody here is just really enjoying the parade. They are. And up, up next, we have the Queen's Court Parade Unit, and it looks like it's a bunch of dancers here. They won first in the Winter Carnival Parade. They've had a parade unit for the last 14 years, and uh, they've told us that they've won many awards in these parades. They've been in the Winter Carnival Parade, uh, Anoka Parade, and Blaine, Columbia Heights. Looks like all over here. A lively group. To entertain the folks here. Moving from dance to a different sort of thing here, we got a van coming up. And of course, this is the Camellia Rose Outreach Services van. Um, Camellia Rose minibus with staff members in it and their families are walking alongside carrying banners. Uh, and greeting people out here. Seems like a lot of people talking to the crowd. And Dorothy, you know, the Camellia Rose is another one of those things we have in Coon Rapids to help people. Um, they try to get people as independent as possible. Um, they've developed an outreach services department, including a Camellia Club, their adult day program, and their Meals on Wheels program. We've had a chance to go down and tape their Meals on Wheels in progress, and it's just amazing to watch the faces of the residents that actually get the meal delivered to them. You're right, and their goal is to keep people in their houses for as long as possible, which is a, a nice way to keep an independent living. Looks like somebody lost the store here. <laughs> we got Target <laughs> Cart Brigade coming up next here, pushing, of course, those red carts that I'm sure all of you use. At uh, one time or another. Yeah, yes. This this happens to be the Target off of, from uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard. Yes, but I think they uh, actually recruit people from over the area, even the North Town Target. Okay. People that want to participate here. They're under the direction of Ann Floral, who is their team relations lead. And they're just out here having a good old time with water, candy, doing routines for us. Of course, anybody knows those uniforms when you walk into the store, you see the red and khaki. Easy to identify with here. Looks like the crowd is just enjoying grabbing that candy. <coughs> well, Steve, that's the best part of any parade is to be able to uh, is to be able to see how many feet you can get in your pockets. The more enterprising of the kids will probably bring a plastic bag or a sack to pick it up and put it in. There, you can see the crowd, all the kids jumping up and down, waiting for the next people to come by here. Which happens to be, by the way, Champlain Park Marching Rebels. Yes. Our third band tonight. They are um, under the direction of Steve Lyons and assisted by Mike Boyts. There we go. And I, I think what they're doing, they're kind of stopped and they're kind of waiting for the uh, crowd and the, and the unit ahead of them to move forward because they want this whole street in front of them here to do their routine for the judges. Yes. And they need a lot of space because they do a lot of intricate drill uh, maneuvers as uh, most bands do in the parade today. They do. Again, maybe we can mention that this is the third annual Coon Rapids 4th of July Parade. I'm Steve Erickson along with Dorothy Jun, mm -hmm. bringing you the highlights of this parade, which so far has been great to watch. It has been wonderful. And the wind has died down, the sun is out, the clouds have dissipated, so everybody seems to be in a holiday mood. By the way, Steve, this parade winds down past us Northdale here and goes into Sand Creek Park and um, then the big sub 4th of July carnival really gets into full swing when the parade is over. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see them moving forward now where the judges will be judging them and uh, when they start to play we're go we're going to do is we're going to be quiet again and just let them play and entertain you. You know Dorothy this theme Welcome to Africa is different this year. This is going to be an African tune that we're going to be listening to. 
And of course, Champlain Park High School is one of our newest, newer, I shouldn't say newest anymore because it's been around for several years. It opened in 1992. There's 180 members here, Steve, by the way. The color guide is directed by Jaden Helgestad and Lee Humphrey, and the percussion is directed by Steve Statton. And here they come, so why don't we just uh, watch and enjoy? There you have it, the Champlain Park High School Rebels, and what a performance they gave to the judges. They even had a little routine mixed in with their music. Very unusual African theme and a very striking theme, I think. Looks like coming up next here, we have the Isanti Royalty. Shalyn Hagel is the Isanti Princess, and Gianna Drexton is the Isanti Princess also. And Beth Hathaway is 1994 Miss Isanti. There you can see a nice shot of the royalty all waving to the crowd. All beautiful, beautiful girls. And here, coming up after the girls, we have the Alder A's girls softball team. They were state champions, and I think what's wonderful. It looks like they're 12 and under, the 12 and unders. Quite an accomplishment for them, I'm sure. 
They're coached by Judy Mellum and assistant coaches are Denise and Terry. Got a little chant going on with their uh, vehicle, too. I think they're pretty proud. Coming up next, we have the Crystal Frolics float and royalty on it. Queen Jennifer Lynn Anderson and Princesses Jennifer Jean Anderson and Shannon Schmidt. And the length of their reign, of course, like most, is usually a year. And they celebrate Crystal Frolics July 27th through the 30th, so they're a month later than most of our celebrations. They have a carnival, fireworks, and of course, a large softball tournament. Steve, what, what community in this northern area does not have a softball tournament in connection with their big community celebration? It just seems to be a natural part of it in the summer celebrations. Big sport. Up next, we have the Buffalo Royalty driving in a convertible car. You can see them waving to the crowd. Looks like they're having a great time. Coming up next, Tad Jude for Congress. Another politician, and of course, last year was the first year that politicians were actually allowed in the parade. So this is, they're all back again this year. And then we see our neighbors, the Anoka Halloween float, done with the greens, the golds, the oranges, the pumpkin in the background. All their royalty is on the uh, float. Miss Congeniality, the Anoka Princess, Sarah, I can't even see her last name, Ledoux, Ledoux is Miss yeah. Anoka. And Dorothy, who of, from Coon Rapids or anywhere up north has not attended the Anoka Halloween Parade? They have a wonderful parade they put on each year for the people, and it seems like it gets better and better every year. Actually, Steve, I think they have two parades, don't they? Don't they have one for the children? I think they the have a kitty parade. Right. It's so fun for parents to come out and see their kids kind participate of, in a parade. Right. Fun to get in, in the, into the program. Yes. Coming up next is the Walker Plaza van. It kind of looks like a bus here. And the Walker Plaza is a senior retirement community. So we have several of those scattered throughout the community up here to serve our seniors. The Northeast Metro Royalty is right after them. And uh, this is the third year that they're going into and they stress community service. Uh, and the gals eligible to run for Queen in here are from all over the Northeast and over Blaine, Coon Rapids and Ham Lake. And uh, some of their service, service projects include playing bingo with residents of Park River States, packing food baskets, and sponsoring needy families at the holidays. So that's a Northeast Metro royalty. It's great to see all the community involvement these people have. Up next is East Bethel royalty, Queen Bethany Hibbard and Princess Jill Werdeman in a convertible. Their celebration takes place July 8th. And they have traveled out of state, as with um, a few other of these groups. They've been to La Crescent, Wisconsin. So some people in Wisconsin, I know some have traveled to Florida, some of these bands. So. Northeast State Bank has got a little uh, band in it uh, in the parade right after them. And uh, they're throwing out candy and getting a little advertising in for the bank. Coming up next is South St. Paul Capos uh, Days. And Dorothy, we found out something interesting about this. Kaposia is actually an Indian tribe back from 1832 to 1845. And, and their celebration theme is tying traditions to tomorrow. They takes place June 22nd through the 25th. And of course, this is like another place, uh, their new royalty, they were just crowned just like the others. So this is one of their first parades. I'm sure putting on their best stuff for the crowd here. Right, and following them, we have the Anoka County Park Rangers. They got a horse, they have their little carts, two horses and their little carts. There is the Anoka County Park Rangers. You can see them on horses here. <laughs> got Buckman down by us here, shaking some hands. The music you hear is Angelo's Kaleidope. And of course, that's sponsored by the Olive Garden. I don't know if we can get a shot of him here, but the Buckman is up here. Uh, of course, many of you may have seen him before. There he is. There he is. And right uh, alongside him is the Dassel Red Rooster Days Royalty. Miss Dassel is Joanna Josephine, and Princess is Tiffany Schmeising. 
they celebrate their um, community celebration takes place on Labor Day weekend. Another, Riding in an open convertible. Another nice time of year to have a celebration. You bet the it fall, is. Late summer. Coming up next, we have Engine <coughs> One blowing its horn here for us from the Oak Grove Fire Department. James Rogers is their engineer. And I understand that Blaze may be on board somewhere, the Dalmatian dock. I don't see them from I here, but that, that doesn't mean they're not there on the other side or we, uh, on the other side away from us. Maybe he decided to sleep in today, <laughs> stay at the station, stay on call. You never know, or maybe he is on call duty, right. But they do have a Dalmatian dog out in the city of Oak Grove. Which, of course, is not associated. Not a city. Not associated so much with fire stations today as they used to be on the fire truck. After the truck, we see the Gross Line Beverage um, First Delivery Truck. It was restored by Duke Gross Line in 1990. This original truck was used by the Senior Gross Line in 1919. Yeah, as you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the delivery trucks, the beer delivery trucks of today. That has been around for quite some time. Looks like almost 75 years. Someone inside waiting, waving to the crowd here. Sadie, Sadie. Stephen, we have a little break I see coming in right now. And um, I think we should talk a little bit about the Lions because they are the ones who sponsor this. They, are, um, they do a lot of good work in our community. And uh, we were talking with the, one of the organizers of the parade, Jim Fox, and he was telling that they have set up a foundation that would uh, kick in in case it's ca uh, charitable gambling ceases. You never quite know from one year to the other in this uh, state what's going to happen. And so they're putting money aside into a fund, into the foundation, and they're also saying that the public can donate to it. They want to uh, build up a real good base so they can have enough money for... Um, uh, humanitarian efforts for education, for health, for the citizens of Coon Rapids. They always do a good job. The Lions have, I don't think there isn't a place in our community where they haven't helped out when they're, when they're asked. They do a marvelous job. They do. They've don done a lot of donations. Um, Lions Coon Creek Park, if anybody's gone down there, they were the ones involved in getting that together. Uh, they recently gave money for an addition to the Sand Creek Park concession stand. And later in the parade, we're possibly going to be seeing the new rescue boat here given to the Coon Rapids uh, Fire Party Department or purchased mm -hmm. by them. The Lions uh, gave money towards that. So a lot of help they've given to this community and a well, lot of thanks I think we owe them. I think you're right because I think last year alone they put over a quarter of a million dollars back into the community and that is a lot of money. They have done well. You know, Dorothy, coming up next, we have the Chopstick Percussionists. Something new this year also that we have not seen last year. Uh, they were formed in May of 1991 by Mike Mayer. And of course, Mike is the conductor at the high school, Kunapitz High School Band. This marching drumline provides very exciting street entertainment by combining flashy drill and visuals with precision playing to provide very high quality entertainment. They've won many awards and parades without the use of a color guard, brass, or wind instrument. And here they come marching on by us right now, so let's take a listen. Very unusual and very interesting, isn't it? Steve, one of the things that uh, we learned about this group is that they love to interact with the crowd, and uh, you'll see them now interacting with the crowd. They like to make sure that everybody's having a good time, and as well as them. And it looks like they have a fun, fun time, doesn't it? You wonder if they know where to go, how to go. <laughs> Some of them have masks on their face here. But it looks like they're safe and just have a good time. 25 to 30 highly talented, experienced players, and they are all over the age of 18. By the way, anybody listening or watching this, uh, they do take bookings for parades and bookings to uh, entertain people, so if you think that you've got a use or a time when you could use this group, boy, they certainly would love to come. All you have to do is uh, give them a call. Right.
getting a round of applause by the crowd here and a well-deserved round of applause. They look very excited, <laughs> they have to say fun. the least. They have fun. You can see they have fun doing it. Very entertaining. It's fun to see the crowd interact with all these people out Great. here. You know, a lot of events, like people go see movies, I'm sure, all over things you sit down and watch. But a, a parade, you can get out, you know, get into the nice weather and actually interact with the participants in it. And that's really nice. There's that guy showing off there to the crowd, maybe demonstrating something. Just having a great time. Up next, we have the AEC bucket truck. That's the Anoka Electric Corporative truck. They serve a portion of Coon Rapids and other parts of Anoka County. Um, they're uh, like most people in uh, trucks and vans and floats, throwing out some candy to the kids. Big bucket truck. And of course, we sometimes forget to give credit where it's deserved, but a lot of those people, of course, during the summer, during bad weather, power outages are out around the clock fixing our power, giving us the best service that they possibly can. That's so for sure. To that's the electric sure. companies, that's great. Fridley, 49er Days royalty coming up next. Dorothy, it looks like they already had their celebration June 15th. This is another nicely decorated float. With Queen Lisa Lucas. Carlson is on it. Princess Christine, I'm not sure her last name. Griebenau? That's Griebenau. what I would say. And Princess Anne McGregor all on that float. Now they're unusual in their royalty is standing through the whole parade. It's a good thing it isn't too long. Most yes. of the royalty, as you'll notice, is sitting, as is the next one from Monticello. Amy Jackson is their leader. And the Monticello River Fest is their celebration, and it's celebrated July 8th and 9th. That's the weekend following our parade and our celebration. The silver and the blue are our beautiful uh, colors catch your eye. You know, that's another nice thing is all these celebrations seem to be spread out throughout the summer, throughout the early part of the spring here. So. I think People you could, have a chance to attend more than one. I think you could go anywhere in Minnesota and find a, a celebration on any given weekend. It's kind of nice that you don't have to pick and choose. You can attend uh, several of them if you want. They're not all on the 4th of July. This is the Sons of Norway coming up next. The little log cabin in Norwegian costumes. The American flag, the Norwegian flag. Sons of Norway. By the way, they were organized in, uh, in Anoka in 1976, so they've been around a few years. Something loud coming up behind that is the American Red Cross down the line here, but first we have the Miss Delano, Carrie Ingram. What a beautiful float. Definitely patriotic. Look at the stars hanging. And they're all dressed in one red dress, one white, and one blue. Right. Of course, celebrating the birthday of our country, which all these celebrations are about. Coming up next is the American Red Cross disaster, disaster van. van. Yes. Mm -hmm. This celebration, they're celebrating, uh, the theme is Help Can't Wait. And so they're there, Johnny on the spot to help. And the American Red Cross in Oak County Branch has been in operation for 19 years, giving a lot of service here to the city of Coon Rapids. So, again. And many educational classes, CPR, um, just everything. That, there's nothing that you can't get at the Red Cross in the way of emergency help. Oh, here we got some people on bikes here for us. The Ray Bynes, Ray Bynes Arena? Arena. Yes, they're out of Lionel Lakes. I understand they have an indoor BMX and bike racing track for the kids to enjoy. Quite a popular sport with the kids who like to ride the bike uh, in, the, in the early teen years, 11, 12, and 13. <laughs> North Branch, uh, Midsummer Royalty coming up next. The Queen and Princess are, of course, aboard there, waving to the crowd. 
North Branch is uh, north of us. And I'm sure they have some sort of celebration around this time of year to get their community involved, and also they participate in other community events, such as ours. Coming up next is St. Paul's Rice Street Festival Royalty. Princess Amy Capon, Princess Tiffany Severin. Amy Shorg is the queen. And you know, Steve, we're gonna follow this whole thing up at the very end. We're coming to the, you know, close to the end. We have the, we have the uh, safe house from the Coon Rapids Fire Department. Uh, there are two big engines. Kids in the safe house waving to us. Of course, if anybody ever wants to uh, go in that house, it is usually at uh, fire station three or two during Fire Prevention Week, which takes place in October. And I imagine it just might be here at the carnival since the firefighters are co-sponsors of this carnival. Yep. Uh, might set it up right there in the park and it certainly is there for the kids and anybody to go through. Coming up next, I believe, is the city's newest fire engine. One of the pumper trucks here and behind that we have a tanker truck. You can see the pumper coming into view there. There we go. Nice close-up of it. You can see the lights. And of course the old fire engine used to be red. Nowadays it's yellow. And All yellow. And we found out about that. It's due to the reflection at night uh, with the lights. It's more visible than red, I guess. So that's why they chose to go with that color. And Steve, as, as our third annual parade is winding down, uh, we can see the new rescue boat. There it is. There's some kids aboard it. And we mentioned that the Lions donated $3,000 towards the purchase of that. And that is brand new off the streets. I talked to uh, the fire department today, and they were just today. got it in today. Right. And you know, now you think the fire, uh, the water rescue would be like from the river or from the uh, wave pool, but you know what? They also use it to rescue any child that might fall into a holding pond or someplace where they can't even get in. They don't do not lead a landing to get the boat into the water to rescue people. Well, that's important in this city, seeing there are so many areas where people can get um, right in inside the residential neighborhood. So many holding ponds and. And of course, the Health Span Ambulance is the one that's bringing up the tail of the parade, and that's going to do it for this third annual parade. And like I said, we just enjoyed some wonderful, wonderful weather tonight. The uh, wind died down, the clouds went away, the sun is out, and I imagine that a lot of people now are going to be going down to the park to enjoy. You know what? Maybe we should just tell the people out there one more time uh, that the dunk tank is going to be there. The police chief, Aaron's, is going to be sitting in the dunk tank. They're trying to raise money for their police um, scholarship Association. They work in conjunction with the Coon Rapids High School uh, uh, Association, raising money uh, for scholarships for the kids. So. so that is a big celebration down at Sand Creek Park. Of course, every year they have that. And I guess most of all here, we want to thank the Lions for putting on this celebration again for a third year for us. And every year it gets bigger and better, and I think we can look forward to even a bigger and better one next year. I guess with that, we're going to close for now. We want to thank you for watching the third annual Coon Rapids Fourth of July Parade. For Dorothy Jund, I'm Steve Erickson, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Everyone.